Hello and welcome to my deep guide and to another edition, 19th edition of the Q&A. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's start with the questions. Hi guys, I bought this machine and Lamy All-Star Pen, but Lamy doesn't work on this device. Everyone said Lamy working good on the Big Me, so what is the problem? I didn't change any settings. Well, uh, not all Big Me devices are the same, right? So some of the Big Me devices do use EMR uh, pens or they have a Wacom layer, so they will be compatible with EMR pens. And it sounds like uh, that's the type of the um, Lamy All-Star Pen that you purchased because those are are EMR enabled PEMs and unfortunately the Big Me B751 doesn't have a Wacom layer and therefore it is not compatible with EMR pens. So no, this one will not work on that device because they're simply not compatible. Can you make a video for 353 update to check if everything is working? Well, I can make the update uh, video to do that, but to check if everything is working, well, then books would actually have to employ me to do the beta testing for them and I don't do that for free. When I add uh, a to-do item to, to get, a, I get a keyboard only, how do you get the handwriting input area where you use the little globe area to switch between these things? So basically when you tap here, this is what you get. You get the keyboard, right? And this icon here next to space, this is what you tap and then you get the handwriting area. And how do you get back to the keyboard? Well, you just tap the same icon there and you're back. Awesome looking product, thank you. I am new to A6X2 user, will this work on that size? Yes, it will and it does. And you can see actually in the MDO demonstration video when I'm talking about the multi-platform support, I do demonstrate in a little bit more detail actually how it works on the A6X2, but it works on A6X2 normally and you can use it in the landscape mode as well. And the page flips will actually scroll from the document up and down until you go to the next page or anything like that. So that actually eliminates the need for zooming in and doing these things. And of course the hyperlinks and everything else works as you would expect it to. And then you can just go back and navigate to where you want to. So that's actually how I use it when I use it on the uh, smaller formats is basically I flip it into landscape mode and then fill in normally. And when I'm done, I just go like this and then navigate away. Thank you, very useful. Just a question. Is it possible to read the synchronized notes online on the Onyx account website? Well, if you're referring to the push books, uh, push.books.com website, yes, the notebooks, you can read them, you can go through them normally, and you can actually even download them uh, as PDFs or maybe even something else. So I've only ever tried PDFs and that works normally. So notebooks, yes. However, the documents and annotations in documents no, that is something that is not supported. You can only download it, but you can't really preview them or list them or read them uh, directly online. Great update. Thanks for all your hard work. Thank you so much. I hope that you like the MDO 25 and 26. And here is the question. By the way, will you be making a hands-on video about a daylight computer tablet? I've heard interesting things about it. I want to know what you think of it. And depending on when this Q&A comes out, the I have already made the video. I just don't know when the scheduling is going to be. So either the DC1 impressions video is already out or and then you can check it out there or it's coming very shortly. So it's one of those two, but uh, you, can, you can hear my impressions and everything in that video. Thank you for your hard work as always. One question I have is what will happen if during next year you find out that you want to update the 2026 MDO? And my answer is that will not happen because this is MDO 2026. If there are any updates that I may want to actually introduce, like feature updates or something like that, those will relate to the future versions of MDO, such as 27, etc. The only updates that may affect MDO 2026 are functional fixes types of updates. And for that, uh, yeah, only if it occurs, then a new update will come out and then people will be uh, notified how to get the updated versions. But generally speaking, like an update just to Im improve something, that's not something that's gonna happen uh, simply because it's done, that's the product. And also I'm very, very happy with the state of MDO where it is, with your helps, with, with the feedback that you've been giving me throughout the years. I think that we've reached a point where the MDO 
video is a really, really strong and stable and tight kind of a product. So I'm never going to be changing just for change sake, because I, first of all, don't believe in that. And second of all, it's bad practice. So the only changes that are ever going to happen on MDO or any of the products that they make are going to be function wise. As far as I can see, MDO 2026 functions really well. Hi, I am a great fan of your channel. Please give us a deep review of Dasung Paperlike Color 12 inch, the world's first portable color e ink monitor, please. Well, uh, I, I, I wish that I could, but also I don't, I'm not really sure that I would. So it's a twofold thing. First of all, communication with Dasung is extremely difficult and inconsistent. And basically over time I've stopped kind of trying too much because I type and then maybe in a couple of months they'll reply and maybe the reply will be in relation to what we've talked about and stuff. So it's extremely inconsistent and not unreliable basically. So and they have not reached out to me regarding uh, yeah reviewing this monitor and I'm certainly not going to be buying it for myself because I'm not interested in that type of technology. Um, so that ties into the other part me not buying or being interested in this type of technology is mainly because I do not think that the Kaleido tree technology, no matter what you do with it, is capable of being a good replacement of, for a screen, like for a monitor, for a computer. For these tablets, yes, because the functionality of the tablets is kind of custom tailored to work with the limitations of the screen. But once you actually take that screen and that technology with its limitations and you hook it up to something that has no idea and doesn't care at all about the limitations of the e-ink screen Kaleido 3 technology, then you end up with a mess and then you end up with a very, very expensive mess. And that has been my experience with the monochromatic screens, e-ink screens, and with the Kaleido 3 screen, it's my estimation is just going to get worse. So those are the reasons why I'm not interested in that review or why it won't happen on my deep guide. I couldn't help but notice that you're using a Samsung pen on your book's device. Was the book pen so bad that it broke already? Just curious. Are you really just curious or are you being a little bit of a... No, the pen is just fine. It doesn't break. It works perfectly normally. It's just that I really love my Samsung S6 pen that I have had now for years and years and years and years. And that's my go-to pen that I use on all of the devices. Are you sure that the Clara does not have manual rotation in the pen zoom menu? new four hours leftmost button. My GeoHD has it there, so this would be, um, yeah, change, strange that it doesn't have it. Well, um, actually depends what content you use on uh, the Clara. So, uh, for example, let's uh, load up a comic book. And if I load up a comic book like this, right, and then I tap here. So let's get it up. Yes, you get the pen. Uh, icons here and indeed you do have the rotate right and then you have the rotated thing and maybe you can fit the width as well it doesn't really work that great right to be honest it's not something that I would preferably use ever but technically speaking yes you do have that rotation thing and to rotate this but that's not what I'm interested in for because I'm not gonna read it in like that what I'm interested in is reading books in a landscape format. And unfortunately, when you have an ebook, that pan and rotation menu is no longer there. So yeah, I'm sure it's not there. Do you have any recommendations on how to reduce all the clutter on the books note screen? I come from Remarkable and my biggest gripe with the books is the screen space wasted on toolbars. Well, there are several ways that you can improve this and let's talk about the notebooks themselves, right? So in the notebooks, if you go down to this menu here, you have the option to customize the toolbar. And this is basically all of the tools that are currently in your toolbar and you can just long press hold and drag down into unused tools, which will then just show up in the more section, right? So you can minimize the amount of or the clutter of the icons there. The second thing that you can use is you can also uh, turn off the text underneath the icons once you've gotten used to the icons and that clean 
cleans things up quite quite considerably and this can be cleaned up even further by removing the tools that you're not using on an everyday basis so that's step number one step number two that you can use is also you can use it in the uh, full screen format and then you can customize your floating toolbar right and again you have customized toolbar options same functionality here just use the tools that you want and that you don't want there are some unfortunately that are pinned and that you can't remove like undo redo and things like that uh, but most of the stuff is very customizable and you also have the option of uh, adjusting the overall scale of the whole toolbar and adjusting it whether you want it to be horizontal or vertical in orientation and once you actually have that then it's extremely easy to actually just uh, have it like this and in addition you have this icon here where it hides it completely you can minimize it to a very very small footprint and the same type of thing can be used in the neo reader on the documents toolbars as well you can customize both the regular toolbar toolbar and the handwriting or scribble toolbar as it used to be called I've been waiting for the Supernote A5X2, but curious to see how this compares. Screen looks great, but from what I remember, the book's note-taking software isn't nearly as good as our feature or feature reach as Supernote. Curious to see if note-taking is improved here too. Well, actually it has from 3.5.3. Now the linking has been improved. I'm not a fan of how the links are displayed in the notes uh, there. So that's still something that can be improved, but the functionality is there because now we can link from a notebook to another notebook or to another PDF file, uh, to a website, to another file, etc, etc. And uh, now it's starting to be a far more robust system. Uh, granted, we are still lacking some of the creature comfort functionalities. Mainly the one that's still lacking is basically the headings or the titles functionality and the ability to create a table of contents. While it's not there yet, it's getting much, much, much closer. And that's a definitely exciting thing to see. All right, that's it for me for this edition of the MDG q and I hope that you found the questions and answers uh, informative and or useful. And as usual, post your questions for future editions of Q&As here, because that's the best way for me to find them. And also check out the mydeepguide.com slash shop where you can find MDO 2024, 25, 26 and MMP, My Deep Guide Meeting Planner, uh, more information about those you can find in the linked playlist below and purchasing of those products helps support independence of my deep guide so thank you thank you so much for watching stay safe stay healthy and see you in the next video bye